Hi, I'm Sylvan Kaufman. I'm here at the Santa Fe Botanical Garden where I want to introduce you to the yucca plant. You may be surprised to learn that yuccas grow from Ontario south to Florida and west to California as well as throughout much of Central America. They reach their greatest species diversity in the southwest and Mexico though. There are between 30 and 50 species of yucca. It was adopted as the state flower of New Mexico in 1927. Yuccas are in the asparagus family and in the agavoidae subfamily, with some close relatives including agaves, hesperalos like this Texas red yucca, and bear grass, melina species. The yucca root, spelled with one C or cassava in grocery stores, is not related to yucca at all, but is rather from a tropical plant called Manahat esculenta. Yuccas are perennials, some living for hundreds of years. Long, stiff, evergreen leaves emerge as rosettes at ground level or from the ends of branches. A few yuccas grow trunks and are considered small trees. Leaves at the bottom of the rosette die and may be trimmed off on, as on this plant or left as a skirt. The leaves of yuccas may be narrow and thin or broad and fleshy. Often the leaves have curling filaments along the edges and sharp points. Gardeners sometimes call them shin daggers. The sharp tips have been used as needles and yucca fibers from the leaves have been used to make baskets, cordage, mats, and sandals. During World War I, New Mexico and Texas produced 80 million pounds of bagging and burlap from yucca fibers. The plants send up one or more thick stalks of fleshy white flowers in spring. Yuccas have a very interesting system of pollination, with most species relying on a particular moss species that pollinates only one species of yucca and lays its eggs in the flower of that species. This type of interdependence between the yucca and its moth pollinator is called an obligate mutualism. German botanist George Engelmann, who emigrated to the U.S. in 1835, first classified many of the yuccas. He noticed that yuccas grown in Europe never set fruit, and he came to the conclusion that the night-blooming flowers with somewhat glutinous pollen were pollinated by moths from a particular genus. He passed the idea on to a young colleague, C.V. Riley, who went on to discover exactly which moths were the pollinators and discovered how important the moths and yuccas are to each other. The moths that pollinate yuccas are either in the genus Tegeticula or Parategeticula. Males and females emerge from cocoons as their species of yucca is flowering. Adults are short-lived and have no need to feed but Tegeticula female moths have a special adaptation for gathering pollen. Instead of having a long tongue characteristic of many moths, she has short tentacles with which to gather pollen, holding it under her chin. She gathers pollen from several flowers within an inflorescence, then flies off to another plant's flowers. There, she carefully inspects the flowers and chooses which stigma will receive her bundle of pollen. She is looking for flowers at the right stage of bloom that have not had any other moths laying eggs yet. Once the female has collected a ball of pollen, Riley says she clings to the top of the pistil, bends her head, thrusts her tongue into the stigmatic nectary, and brings the pollen mass right over, her, over its mouth. The pollen she deposits ensures that the seed pod will hold plenty of seeds. She lays her eggs in the flower ovary where the larvae develop and feed on the seeds. She's careful not to lay too many eggs because the plant might abort a flower with too many larvae in it. Enough seeds are produced that the larvae seldom eat all of them. In this photo, you can see mature fertilized black seeds and tan unfertilized seeds, indicating that there wasn't quite enough pollen or resources to mature all the seeds in this pod. The larvae mature in just a few weeks and drop to the ground to overwinter in a cocoon underground. A few survive more than one winter in case the yucca has a year with no flowers. The only exception to this is yucca aloefolia, which is pollinated by bees. You may see other moths on yucca as well, like this bogus yucca moth, Prodoxus species, whose larvae feed in the flowering stalks. The adult moths don't have the specialized mouth parts, though, to collect and transfer pollen. 
Various species of beetles feed on the leaves, and aphids are attracted to the flowering stalks, often followed by ladybug beetles that feed on the aphids. Yuccas produce several types of fruits. Some are dry pods like those of yucca glauca or yucca filamentosa. Yucca baccata, the banana yucca, has edible fleshy pods. Yucca flowers of most species are edible, although timing of harvest and method of cooking can determine just how tasty they are. And just beware, yucca fruits also act as a powerful laxative. Stems of some species were eaten after being baked as well. I've noticed that the yuccas in my backyard do not get eaten by gophers. This may be because the roots of some yucca species, like soapweed yucca, contain saponins, a glycoside that dissolves readily in water and emulsifies fats and oils, forming a lather. Roots of the soapweed yucca were used as a sort of soap. Here in northern New Mexico, you can find stands of soapweed yucca commonly in, in pinyon juniper woodlands and desert grasslands. The most common yucca in the eastern United States is yucca filamentosa, Adam's needle or Spanish bayonet. It, or it originally ranged from South Carolina to Florida, but has been so widely cultivated, you can even find some growing in New England. Here's a variegated cultivar called Color Guard. One of the most famous and largest yuccas is the Joshua tree, Yucca brevifolia. This yucca is endemic to the Mojave Desert and can reach heights of 20 to 70 feet. Some scientists speculate that the large fruits were once dispersed by now extinct elephants or Shasta ground sloths. Most seeds are now dispersed by rodents like this white-tailed antelope ground squirrel. The soap tree yucca, yucca aleda, is one of the more widespread yuccas in the Southwest and in form resembles the Joshua tree. The edges of the leaves are white. Yuccas can thrive under very dry conditions and some are very cold hardy. Most will thrive in poor soils and some, like Adam's needle, are salt tolerant. Their roots help hold soil in place and provide shelter for animals. Not every garden is suited to host a yucca plant, but if you have a dry sunny spot, you might want to try one out. <music>